to orient you a little bit as to my own uh, research activities over the years. The first part of my research uh, life until 1967 was mainly to look at the brain as an input device. That is, um, how does it react to the environment? Perception, internal communication, um, and only in 67, I began to look at the brain as insofar as it provides output, expression, music, and so forth, um, which is a dangerous thing to do, to step into uh, in the world of uh, neuroscience or physiology. Of course, you see that the output affects the input. So what we did in order to study the output of the brain, we developed a, an instrument, which we call the centrograph, which measures intentional um, expression of, of, of emotion. I just want to emphasize here that it's intentional, it's not a reactive thing, it's not action and reaction, it's not a, a response. In the Shankarian, in, in, in the Skinnerian, Skinnerian sense, but it's a intentional expression of what you want to convey, the feeling you want to convey, and you do this. And, and the, the first we did it with music of the kind of conducting. See, I observed that <coughs> when. Uh, this is Papa Casals and myself in, in Marlborough. And he was very kind to be subject for this experiment. And uh, when you watch somebody conduct, especially Casals or the conduct, Beethoven uses gestures like this with the massiveness, with the uh, inertia of the arm. When you're Mozart, you have a lighter kind of low inertia movements and maybe even a little smile for a certain phrase. You know. A f smile would be totally out of place in Beethoven. You know. And I punch you in the nose for, for doing that. Um, <laughs> so uh, he's about to do this. And here were the cards that we first obtained at that time for uh, Beethoven's uh, expression. Rudolf Serkin was one of our first subjects, and he was very kind of Marlborough to be a subject. And this, he had to think the music in real time, uh, not play it, not play it, just think it. And as he was uh, thinking, to express on the finger rest the, uh, the, the, the beat or the pulse of the music. And uh, he did this, and at first he was going like this, you know, on the finger rest. And I said, uh, no, no, you can't do that. It's out of touch. You have to remain in touch with the finger rest. So you can. Said, but, but I'm a pianist, he said. But I'm a pianist. <laughs> but so he, he, he acceded to do it this way. And uh, then he tried to, so we said to him, all right, now think a piece of Beethoven and do it, and then Mozart, so the one after. And he tried to trick us. He would. Uh, he, he, he would think, he would ask him to think Mozart, and he would think Beethoven, and vice versa. But we caught him very quickly. And then he was convinced that what we we're doing was really good, because we, say we, we could find out from the shape that he was really thinking Mozart and not Beethoven, or vice versa. Then he did it properly <laughs> after that. And with Casals, we had no problem. With it. It took him less than two minutes to understand what was what was needed, and he did it. It was amazing. Yeah. The so um, that was Beethoven, and this is Mozart. You see, they're different. This is Mozart, and Beethoven, and and uh, so we're very elated to find that, and uh, well, so. Then, uh, in, uh, I, I, um, 
I was invited to be part of a group of a group of scientists and uh, Smithsonian conference in uh, uh, in Santa Ynez in California. I was very excited to be part of this group, and I presented these um, these uh, images of Beethoven and Mozart, and the reaction there was of great hilarity. They all laughed at this, and uh, Jerry Letvin from MIT was a great neuroscientist, and I was a fine neuroscientist, and he said. Um, he said, well, Manfred, what are you going to do next with this thing in a derisive way? And I was put on the spot. And I said, I'm going to measure the emotions that way. And I did. And Marvin Minsky, uh, you probably know, was in MIT, made a great... Uh, one of the fathers of AI, and he was also at this meeting. He was he didn't laugh. He didn't. He was one of the few who didn't laugh at this, and I became a friend. And as it turned out, eventually, um, um, the the person who who said this to me about the emotion, what are you going to do next, Jerry Ledwin, um Things changed very much. And uh, I remember seeing him, meeting him once uh, on a plane from San Francisco, I think, to, to uh, New York or Boston. And I was on his plane. And I went up to him and I said, Jerry, I said, I've uh, solved the problem in mathematics and music. And, this. and he, says, he turned around and said, I didn't know there was such a problem. And this is a put down, you know. And uh, so, not some years after that, a third such encounter, I was invited to a, meet, a little dinner arranged for Marvin Minsky and his wife, and Jerry Letter and his wife, the five of us together in, in, here in, uh, in Cambridge. And I had my computer already at that time, and I had the Brian Burke Concerto done, you know, and and at this dinner time, so I passed around the computer with earphones, and they came to Jerry and listened to this. What? This is this is magnificent. This is this is actually crashing in the slow movement. It's crashing. Is that meaning it is, it's 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 expressing grief, grief. It does it does. And from then on, he was totally convinced of what the wondrous thing this is, is, is how, how we express emotions in, in, with the computer like that. So he became a big supporter. Um, it's an interesting story to me, uh, emotionally, because I had a lot of respect for Jerry Leffern. Um, I once listened to his lecture on color at the American Museum of Natural History in, in New York. It was a very fine lecture. Anyway, so here we are. This is what the emotions uh, represented, the, the, the shapes of expression. You see, in this case, there are two graphs for each emotion, the vertical and horizontal component, respectively, of, the, of that particular expression. And there's an average of 50 each one of these. And this is the graphs that um, we heard mentioned this morning in the, or this afternoon in the uh, introduction uh, that, uh, that Marty Cohen gave so kindly about me. And these are um, so those emotions that we studied initially, like this, and then these are compared to individual expressions with the average. And now we ask yourself, what controls these shapes? And I'd like you to do a little, no, before that, all right. So here's the, <coughs> what controls the muscles in the time course? It's a brain program, specific for each emotion so expressed. And what controls the brain program? 
genetic design and neurohormones. To each scentic form, there corresponds a specific feeling or emotion, an inherent body-mind interaction entity. These are not fortuitous couplings of the expression and the feeling. There's a necessary connection. It's part of an entity, a biologic entity. Choiceless as an entity. Red, you see red, you have no choice to see red as green. If you see red, you've got to see red. Green is green, red is red. You have no choice. 